so uh, we can move now to Stanford. Uh, Professor Jung Nguyen um, is going to present us about, uh, she's, she's one of the first surgeons in the world that uses uh, collagen scaffolds in the surgery. So uh, great experience and uh, we would love to, to hear you. Please welcome Dr. Nguyen. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let me share my slides. Okay. So thank you very much uh, to the program chairs for the kind invitation to present at this virtual meeting to share my approach for the use of nanofibular collagen scaffolds to enhance outcomes of uh, lymphatic microsurgery. I have no disclosures. Bybridge is an aligned nanofibrillar collagen scaffold that's made from highly purified bovine type 1 collagen. It's manufactured as a thread, um, about 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters in diameter and about 15 centimeter in length. It's formed by aligned collagen fibrils. Um, it's currently FDA approved for reinforcement of soft tissue repair and has achieved EC certificate for lymphatic tissue repair in Europe. The large surface area and interconnected cavities of the scaffold enable cell infiltration as well as local interstitial flow. And prior study have shown that endothelial cells seated onto aligned collagen scaffolds are more viable compared to non-aligned scaffold by facilitating cell attachment, alignment, and migration. In normal physiologic state, lymph nodes um, secrete growth factors that create a gradient for migration of lymphatic endothelial cells. The biobridge helps to direct lymphangiogenesis by providing a multiluminal structure that promotes lymph flow via a capillary effect, and hence guiding endothelial cells migration and lymphatic capillary network organization towards the lymph node flap. Based on previous work by Boardman and Schwartz that showed that interstitial fluid channeling precedes and guides lymphangiogenesis, uh, we hypothesize that the aligned multiluminal structure of the Bybridge collagen matrix can direct lymphatic regeneration and improve outcomes in physiologic procedures. So currently, this is our treatment algorithm for lymphedema. Initial treatment is dependent on the stage of the disease and whether the excess volume is fluid-based and or due to tissue fibrosis. So physiologic procedure is offered for early stage disease that is mainly fluid excess. Late stage with excessive tissue fibrosis is offered liposuction first. And those who present with mixed, pre um, mixed presentation are offered combination therapy of both physiologic with liposuction. All patients who undergo lymphatic mapping uh, will undergo lymphatic mapping to evaluate if their distal lymphatic channels are intact and to identify potential targets for LVA. Those who have intact distal lymphatics and proximal obstruction and who doesn't have a history of cellulitis, they're a candidate for LVA first. And those who don't have any targets for LVA are offered VLNT. Patients who do have targets for LVA but has history of recurrent infections can undergo both VLNT and LVA. And then based on their outcome, patients who had physiologic procedures may undergo selective liposuction to remove residual focal area of fibrosis. Likewise, patients who had dry liposuction for debulking may undergo VLNT or LVA in the second stage to improve lymph flow and ultimately allow for downgrading of compression garment use. Bybridge is then offered as an adjunctive therapy for these patients with stage one to three lymphedema who was treated based on the described algorithm with suboptimal or unsatisfactory results. Some simply just want to further improve their outcome. Patients must not have any acute infections at least one month around the time of surgery. All patients undergo a perioperative lymphatic mapping with ICG fluorescent imaging to verify staging and identify areas of intact lymphatics and areas of dermal backflow. When used as an adjunctive therapy with vascularized lymph node transfer, as mentioned, preoperative ICG mapping is performed first, and surgery typically involves releasing areas of dense scar tissue 
as previously described by our speakers. And several bybridge tracks are then created subcutaneously using a suture passer. And the bybridge is tunneled proximal and distal to the lymph node flaps such that they cross the areas of dermal backflow and linking native lymphatics to the lymph node flap and then to the lymph node basins in a network that mirrors physiologic lymph flow. This is schematically shown here for the upper extremity and lower extremity. This video shows how bridge is placed. Here, the vascularized lymph node transfer was placed in the axilla. In our practice, the recipient site depends on the location of maximal edema. In this cartoon, the incisions are placed with a scaffold, a scalpel. A trocar is then introduced and tunneled subcutaneously under the skin. A grasper is then placed through the trocar and the bridge is pulled through. The trocar um, is then removed. And this process can be performed using a suture passer, a picture which is at the lower corner of the, um, the screen. Is what we, this is what we use currently and it's readily available and do not require the use of a trocar. The bridge can then be secured in place with clips if so desired and this process can be repeated. Um, the incisions are typically closed with simple sutures and then over time as the body heals, the lymphedema improves. So it should be noted that if the bridge is secured in place, it's important not to obstruct the central luminal, uh, multiluminal structure. When used as an adjunct therapy with LVA, again, ICG fluorescent imaging is um, performed preoperatively to detect the location of functional distal lymphatics in areas of dermal backflow. The bridge are then placed in proximity to the LVA or intact lymphatics and similarly tunnel subcutaneously proximally to the nearest nodal basin, bridging areas of dermal backflow. So in upper extremity lymphedema, bridge are routed to the ipsilateral and then contralateral supraclavicular nodal basins. In low extremity lymphedema, bridge are routed to the ipsilateral and then contralateral groin lymph nodes. The goal is to reestablish unidirectional lymph flow from distal to proximal to the nearest nodal functional nodal basin. So this shows some of our results. On the left is an intraoperative photo showing location of bridge insertion. Preoperative ICG lymphatic mapping show diffuse dermal backflow and absence of lymphatics. And postoperative lymphatic mapping showed formation of new lymphatic channels and decreased dermal backflow at the site of bridge placement. Another patient with secondary lymphedema in right upper extremity who had lymph node transfer and bridge place about two years later Perioperative lymphatic mapping showed few lymphatic channels with presence of dermal backflow. And post bridge placement, we now see presence of new linear lymphatic channels seen in the proximity where the bridge was placed with decreased dermal backflow. This is demonstrated on ICG fluorescent imaging. This is a preoperative lymphatic mapping showing sparse lymphatic channels in the arm and the location of the VLNT. And there is significant dermal backflow in the upper arm seen medially as well as lateral posteriorly in the proximal forearm and upper arm. post bridge lymphatic mapping showed new linear lymphatic channels in proximity to where the bridge were placed. We also see that there are dynamic flow in these channels that drain to the axilla. So if you follow the drainage in the top lymph vessel, drains to the axilla, and also to our VLNT. 
suggesting that bi-bridge placement may facilitate the formation of new functional lymphatic vessels. This same patient clinically had initial right upper extremity excess volume of 19% that was decreased to 8% after VLNT and is now at 1% residual excess volume at a year out from bi-bridge placement. Another patient, she had vascularized lymph node transfer in the left arm with significant, with initial excess volume of 37%. Um, decreased to 10% at a year and a half after physiologic procedure and down to 5% at six months after bi-bridge. There's additional evidence of lymphangiogenesis after treatment with VLNT and bi-bridge seen on MR lymphogram. This patient had VLNT transferred to the left groin and bi-bridge placed from the ankle to the ipsilateral groin VLNT. Postoperatively um, seen on the middle image, there's increased flow of lymphatic contrast compared to preoperative imaging starting at the level of the upper calf and then continue to the left groin. The formation of the new lymphatic vessel was confirmed in the areas of bi-bridge implantation with the direction parallel to the implanted scaffolds. This is clinically correlated here showing reduction of excess volume in the left leg from 11% in pre-op down to negative 4%. Patients with LVA and Vibrid similarly did well. This patient had early stage two disease of her left leg who is 19 months after, after LVA and Vibrid placement with normalized volume difference. Another patient with early stage two disease of the left leg who had LVA and eight months after Vibrid placement showing decreased excess volume from 14% in pre-op down to 10% after LVA and negative 4% eight months after Vibridge. Her preoperative lymphatic mapping showed initial slow lymph flow and several obstructed lymphatics. Her post-op lymphatic bi-bridge, um, lymphatic mapping after bi-bridge placement showed quicker flow in presence of new lymphatic collectors that are in continuity with the native lymphatics. And empties into the groin lymph nodes. these channels drain to the, lymph, the groin lymph nodes. So we recently reported our retrospective outcome of a cohort of patients who had bi-bridge place after LVA and or VLNT with or without liposuction based on our treatment algorithm to similar patients who did not have bi-bridge place. There were 18 patients in the treatment group and 11 in the control group. The initial ratio of excess volume was equivalent in both groups. And we found that the treated group had significantly greater edema reduction compared to the control group at an average total follow-up period of 29 months. Here we see that the Bybridge cohort before Bybridge placement had worse clinical response to physiologic procedure than control, the median of 58% versus 70%, but did significantly better than control cohort after bi-bridge placement. Sub-analysis of the LVA and VLNT groups similarly shows statistically significant volume reduction in each subgroup after bi-bridge placement. For patients who had large volume liposuction, the ratio of excess volume reduction decreased to near normal after combination therapy of physiologic with liposuction. 
seven out of eight patients in this group experienced further volume reduction that was maintained for an average of 13 months in the study after Bybridge implantation. Comparisons of pre and post-operative ICG lymphatic mapping in the Bybridge group further showed a statistically significant increased number of lymphatic collectors after Bybridge implantation and when compared to control, 4.5 versus 1.8. And there were more collectors seen above the elbow or the knee with 50% able to reach the axilla or the groin. So in conclusion, um, based on our experience, we find that Vibridge is an effective adjunctive therapy when combined with physiologic procedures in the treatment of lymphedema, and it can help normalize the lymph volume in early stage disease. There's clinical evidence and radiographic evidence on ICG fluorescent imaging and MR of increased lymphatic drainage and enhanced lymphatic regeneration at the sites of Vibridge placement. Volume reduction can also be stabilized after Bybridge implantation in patients who had combination physiologic procedure with larger volume liposuction. We currently have a prospective randomized control clinical study that is um, underway. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Great, great talk, uh, Jung.